to myself. Hi, and blessings this is your girl the philly bruja hey y'all hey today is friday also we are in black history month although i personally celebrate black history every day of the year always especially when you're a mom you gotta teach your kids what they're not teaching them in school you know what i mean so just a uh, prelude to what's to come I was in the bushes. Um, yeah, it was on Ladies Live Show. I was in her bushes, you know, just listening and putting the chunk to sleep. And like out of nowhere, I can't even remember what the topic was. Um, but out of nowhere, I heard my my uncle, my great uncle, great great uncle, excuse me, his name mentioned, and you know, I my ears just kind of poked up a bit, like. Hmm? You know what I mean? Because it's just such a small world. It really is. And um, the person on the panel was trying to get the name out. And I said the name. And I'm like, you know, it was my uncle. But actually, he's my great, great uncle. Um, I honest, I never had the pleasure of meeting him. But the stories um, I was told, you know, growing up. And even if you look back on, I don't know. You had to go all the way back to maybe one of my first couple of videos. I had my grandpa, um, who was from Savannah, Georgia. My mother's side um, hails from the South. Uh, my father's side is from Cuba and Puerto Rico. Um, if you look at that video, I think um, I had titled it something about um, the interview with my grandpa on Throwing Roots. And the stories I heard about, you know, my late great uncle um was amazing okay <laughs> i'm sorry i didn't have a chance to meet him but it all made sense because i truly believe that working with roots and um being able to alchemize certain energy it's passed down in the blood it is in the blood so to speak um i was doing some research i really didn't get too far with it too much um, on the internet. So I just figured I'd just bring to the table on um, the stuff that I did find and the things that I was told um, in the stories about my um, about my relative. Now, before I get into that, I just wanted to talk about this um, really quick funny story, really quick. Uh, 
we were going down. Uh, we decided to take a, a girl's trip down to uh, Hilton Head, Buford, and Savannah. You know, just to touch base with family and friends. Just out of nowhere. You know, we were like, I don't know, 21, 22. My girlfriend and I, um, my best friend, actually. We've been best friends forever. She is um, the godmother to my children, and I'm the godmother to hers. And she's from Jamaica. At the time, you know, she had a pretty strong accent. Right now, you probably couldn't even tell she was Jamaican because she just sounds very Americanized now. But <laughs> I remember, because this is, this is back, you guys, when um, we didn't have GPS and stuff like that on our cell phones. Like, we had to do it kind of old school off a map <laughs> and follow those directions on map but okay yeah that's how long ago it was and uh we were down there you know as we're driving from philly you know as we're going deep and deep and deeper down uh you know down to the south uh clothes are coming off you know went from having our big jackets on to a sweater on to a sweatshirt by the time we got down there it's like t-shirt and shorts okay it was a very long, long drive. Um, I, I've never done it again, and I don't plan on it. When the time I go, I'm flying. <laughs> Anywho, um, we were, uh, what was it, uh, Ladies Island. We were going into Buford and Ladies Island, and we got kind of lost because the directions weren't clear on the map plus directions. We were going to... Um, one of our friends' uh, house down there at the time. And so I pulled over on the side of the road and uh, we seen a nice man selling some stuff, you know, on the side of the road. And he was talking. I'm going to pull this all together, watch. <laughs> so we were asking him for directions, right? And instantly, my girlfriend, she switches and put her, you know, Jamaican accent on her passport line. Um, and she was talking to him, you know, in, in Patois or whatever. And I'm laughing and I look at her, I said, um, that man is not Jamaican. And she argued me down that he was Jamaican. I said, no. I was like, he's one of the Gullah Geechee people. And she was like, what's that? And I'm like, you know, it's a, um, it's a, it's a culture of like, um, the people who first settled here, who was from directly from Africa, and you know, they believe in throwing roots and you know, um, medicine men and things of that nature. And but he, like, she didn't believe me because because of his accent. And I was trying to explain to her what he was saying. He was telling us to go, you know, over the bridge into you know, Mega Right. But I'm sitting there, I'm like, she, he's not, he's not Jamaican girl. <laughs> He's not Jamaican. She's like, yes, he is. Yes, he is. I know my own people. I know my own people. I said, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we get to our destination. Um, and we were talking to uh, our girlfriend as we're settling in. And I'm like, and I tell her, I'm like, girl, will you tell her about the Gullah Geechee people that's down here? And I was like, she's arguing with me the whole time, you know, from that point till now that he was Jamaican. And, and um, she was like, oh. And, and mind you, this other uh, person who's our friend is Jamaican. She said, oh, girl, no, uh-uh, they not Jamaican. And my girlfriend's eyes got so big. And she was just like, wait a minute, what? They have islands off of the Carolinas where people live and maintain their traditions? <laughs> yes. And my other girlfriend is cracking up laughing because she's used to them by now. She, she lives in Buford. And she's just cracking up laughing. And I'm laughing because... Obviously, my family, that part of my family is from the South. So, from that part of the South, too, in uh, Savannah, Georgia, as well. Okay, <laughs> so now we're here. Let's get into um my dear great-great-uncle. I just wanted to put that story in because I just thought it was um hilarious that she had no idea. I mean, a lot of people don't know, I guess. And they just assume that these people are, you know not American, not from here, but they are. <laughs> and I did uh, read a few years ago that, that the um, the people the, from the Gullah Geechee um, villages and the places where they live was trying to be taken over by uh, 
resorts, you know, coming in to, to buy out the land, making it almost impossible for these people to pay the back taxes on the land. So um, I'm actually going to look into that and, and see what's going on there. But that brings me um, to the story. Now, I was, um, I guess you could kind of say this is a story time too, as well as uh, Black history information as well. Uh, I didn't see a lot of information out there. But um, that brings me to this point. Um, yeah, so I was being nosy, minding my business and minding y'all too. Um, <laughs> and live bushes. And I heard someone uh, mention uh, my uncle. And so I just put it out there. But I was putting chunks of sleep, so I couldn't really, you know, come up there and, and talk about it more. But I figured I'd do a video on it because I didn't see much on it. All right. And so here's the thing. His real name, because you, okay, through, out, um, our, uh, spiritual community, um, occult community, people that are into, um, uh, the African religions as far as, um, Santeria, uh, Voodoo, 21 Division, follow me on bay, et cetera, et cetera. You got, um, you, people will always hear, you know, about the legend of, um, Dr. Buzzard. Now, just so you know, there has been several, you know, medicine man. See, I can never do a live. I can never do anything without showing up. Okay. So, there has been several people who has come afterwards, including um his son and his grandson, who um carried on with the name um Dr. Buzzard as you know the famous medicine man. But the original, the first, the first one hails from um South Carolina. And the name Dr. Buzzard was actually um given to him. His real name was um Stephen Robinson. And he was from um, St. Helen, Helena's Island. Um, he began practicing root work, I don't know, whew, early 1900s, right? And um, he continued attracting clients both locally and from around the country up until his death um, in early 1947. I did put um, a picture in the thumbnail of his um, tombstone. Uh, and his, to this day, um, his burial site is pretty um, private because people keep going and stealing um dirt from it i talked about that too hold on one second you guys now according to legend robinson's father was a witch doctor who had been brought directly to st helene's island from west africa and despite the whole um antebellum being um on important slaves from africa he was said to have wielded enormous spiritual powers which he passed on to his son who we now uh known as the legendary Dr. Buzzard. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Dr. Buzz Buzzard's specialty was um, chewing roots in court and practice in um, designed to protect criminal defendants from guilty verdicts or harsh sentences. Now, those are what we would call um, court case spells and, and things of that nature uh, that are still practiced and done today. And if you go back and look at the video I did with my grandpa, he talks about that as well. He got, I mean, it got them out of some, some heavy shit. <laughs> so, like, I know how, um, if you look at TV and the movies and things of that nature, you think of, um, you was going to see someone who, you know, got the tribal stuff on, maybe, or someone that looked a little spooky. It was exactly the opposite. Um, he was always well-dressed always had a whole lot of money and the finest cars yep even back then even back then he he was he was getting the money okay because he was known not only locally but nationally he had clients everywhere and that in itself is amazing because we're talking about the 1940s y'all it wasn't like it was internet and things of that nature going on right and also to break it down in simpler terms um we're talking about hoodoo, mainly hoodoo, root working, and um, the medicine man. A lot of people who weren't able to 
before going to see doctors, they would go to people like my late great uncle who would um, be able to help them with herbs and, and things of that nature to, um, you know, get them get them well again. Then you also have people who will come, you know, for uh, little special mojo bags, a little juju, a little hoodoo, and voodoo, <laughs> among other things. Things that we use um, even to this day. I mean, I, I might be kind of somewhat semi-retired at the moment. Um, it always just came natural to me. It was just, like I said before, in the blood. So, legend still has it. And also, people still talk about, you know, the beautiful children that he made. Um, what I say that that's still in the blood? Yep, that is too. I have a, a family full of gorgeous <laughs> people who are good with roots and that's on both sides too to be um to be quite honest but dr buzzard his legacy even preceded his death like um people people actually still would try to find it and i'm um, still still dirt from the grave if they find it you know they believe that even after death he was super um powerful and possessing that kind of dirt you know would give the person, the root worker, whoever was using the dirt, you know, supernatural powers. Now, and we got to remember, though, back in the day, like, people turned to root doctors for many reasons. I mean, hell, come and think about it, they probably, I mean, I guess that's why they still seek them out to this day. You know, perhaps seeking, like, good fortune for themselves, bad fortune for others, reversals of, you know, if someone put a bad root on them, so to speak. Um... Back in that day, and even up until, I want to say, like, the 70s, they called it um, prescriptions, you know, whether if it's uh, the suffering root, the death root, the shut your mouth root, um, love root, chewing root, luck root, and protection root. <laughs> and even people, I mean, I'm not, I'm laughing, but you got to, you got to take that serious. I think I did talk to you guys about Hoodoo. Uh, a couple of videos back as far as with um goofer stuff and things of that nature. You got to be very careful with that. Um, the court case work, you know, and, and usually back then, um, Dr. Buzzard was able to go in and actually see how the case went. Now, I don't know if his presence even being there swayed it. I mean, I guess we'll never know. But, you know, he, he left a legacy and it never fails. I can hear, I hear it. <laughs> I've been to a lot of places in this country um, alone. And I've heard them be brought up, especially um, in the spiritual community, so to speak. Um, there has been several people afterwards who took on the name, you know, just to cash in on the legacy. But I wanted to bring to you guys, um, you guys and girls today, you know, the first one, the original you know, who, who started, who started this uh, whole thing, where the name actually came from, who it was, you know, who this all came from, not that he started, you know, as far as um, root, root, root work and things of that nature, because that's something that's um, ingrained in us, uh, even before, you know, we were brought here to the Americas, you know, if you think about it, how many different things uh, do we still do and we don't realize that it's hoodoo? Think about that. Um, that whole saying uh, is like on, on the New Year's, right? Uh, you you got to let a man walk into your house first. You don't want a woman to do it because it's going to give you bad luck for the rest of the year. Or you got to cook black eyed peas. Um, and uh, what is it? Black eyed peas and collard greens, you know for New Year's. That way it sets the trend, you know, for the whole new year to be profitable and um, successful. Or the other one was if um, don't sweep at nighttime because you're like sweeping your blessings away or the broom brushing across your feet. You got to stop and spit on the broom. I mean, this kind of sh this is this kind of stuff like, you know, that we do and we don't even know like where it comes from. But it's hoodoo. And it's the original, you know, teachers and stuff who brought this over with them. And we've kept that. 
like my grandpa used to say, well, he still says it because he's still alive, but <laughs> he says, black people got all the scenes and white people got all the money. <laughs> But our sayings and our t traditions has lasted, you know, all of this time. And now you got me and you got like um, others in my family on both sides who are carrying on, you know, the, the um, oral tradition of um, hoodoo and voodoo. And personally, um, I was initiated into Santeria, but it's up to us now, this generation, to carry it on. But I just wanted to bring just a couple of tidbits about um about Dr. Buzzard. He wasn't um what most people would think if you look at Hollywood. And no, he was a very fine dressed man, quiet for the most part, expensive taste, cars, and the monies. Okay. Yeah. I'm telling you, when you go to get your root work and your, you know, um, actually tarot cards is I wouldn't even put that in there, but you do have some that, that reads bones and reshells. shells um you always want to see the type of life your worker is living you know what i'm saying I, I, honestly how can you go to someone for prosperity work i actually happen to be good at prosperity work and manifesting okay i tell you guys all the time i don't really bother too much with the love stuff but the prosperity work um manifesting uh whether it's like your career even uh court cases things like that that's always been my ni my niche but um, with the love thing, I don't really like to bother that too much. It's it's kind of annoying. <laughs> but definitely, um, it's crazy. There's not more about him on um the internet, you know, because you would hear people from down south say, "I can go and see Doctor Buzzard." You know, the original Doctor Buzzard died like in 1947. That was the one I was related to and his kin as well. Um, and then there was other people who took on the name, you know, just to capitalize off um, the success that he had um, as a medicine man, as we call them. I feel like um, even back in the back in that day, maybe even his presence alone might have just kind of put fear into um, juries and things of that nature. If he's sitting there, you know, watching kind of thing you know it's like respect and fear and people still feel like that too they respect and fear uh root doctors because they're not fortune tellers you know <laughs> you know you're not gonna you're not gonna catch a sign outside and say come on in usually customers even my own um when i did do uh root work consultations because i never did any root work for money um it was all word of mouth. Even my readings, word of mouth. And that's how this traveled. So can you just imagine that back in the 40s? And you got clients from not only locally, but all over the country. Word of mouth. Hmm. Something was being done right. Something was. Now, um, what I did find, and I won't be holding you guys too much longer. Um, what I did find on uh the internet i'm gonna just go ahead and quickly read that for you guys it was um an investigative journalist his name was muckraker okay <laughs> and a novelist he died um in 1958 in Buford. uh it says adam is one of the many to record the outworkings of conjurers in his old adopted home Adams was here when Dr. Buzzard and Dr. Bug got in trouble for allegedly selling arsenic-laced potions to healthy young men. It would make their hearts beat and flutter long enough for them to dodge military service in World War II. <laughs> crafty. Very crafty. Dangerous, but crafty. <laughs> this got the attention of the feds. <laughs> Dr. Bug, identified as Peter Murray, paid a thousand dollar fine and two thousand eighty dollars and seventy seven cents in back income taxes, pulling it to crumple small bills from a trunk dragged from an astonishing from I'm sorry, dragged into an astonished courtroom. You couldn't just take the money; I just took the whole trunk. Okay. <laughs> and Dr. Buzzard was a familiar sight at the county courthouse as well. He sat in tr trials, tr chewing roots, his eyes shaded by purple sunglasses. Okay, oh. <laughs> But on his day in court, he hired his own powerful Buford attorney, 
State Senator um, Brantley Harvey Sr. to represent him. Dr. Buzzard got off with a $300 fine. <laughs> wow. Harvey's son, W. Brantley Harvey Jr. of, Bru of Buford, uh, tells it in his new uh, memoir, Palmetto Patriot. That's when it was time to pay up. Dr. Buzzard took his father into the attic and opened a trunk. When he scooped out $5,000 in cash, that much didn't even make a dent in the money in his trunk. Dr. Buzzard, known locally as Stephen Robinson, worked from his 20-acre tract in the oak section of St. Helena's Island. Clients came by boat, ox car, or cars with tags from many states. He did a mail order business as well for a while, but he never signed his name to any of the money orders or check, according to Pierre McGowan, the son of um, St. Helena's postmaster of that area. And he drove fine automobiles when cars were hard to come by, especially for y'all. We're talking about 1940s here in the South. He peeled off cash for a new sanctuary when the Baptist church burned down on St. Helena. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. They say he got his mantle from his father, a native of Africa, that he passed it to his late son-in-law, who people knew as Dr. Buzzy, Dr. Buzzard, said he was born with a call, the seventh son. I was born with one as well. I don't know um, how many other people in my family was. Actually, that's probably something I should find out. Dr. Buzzard and Dr. Bug both died not long after their brush with Uncle Sam, referred to at the time as Mr. Big. They say Dr. Buzzard died of stomach cancer. I could not find any mention of his passing in the Buford Gazette or Times. I don't believe it was stomach cancer. Um, I'm actually going to touch base with my 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 great grandpa. Sorry, with my grandpa and um and see. I thought it was some kind of can um some kind of it was something else. Other than fooling around with the draft board, Dr. Buzzard's simultaneously life in the mainstream in the shadows was widely accepted. Widely accepted. And he was like the first famous voodoo medicine man, okay? And it was accepted. Imagine that. Voodoo is an established tradition. And that's with um a lot of people, even in South Carolina, black and white. They do have um respect for the tradition and that's good because it's, it's been you know tough up until these last I'm going to say 20 years or so where we weren't really we didn't have to practice in hiding too much um where where it's become much more acceptable and now as of recently I'm seeing a lot more people of color um embracing and accepting our uh African spiritualities and our religions and that's a good thing I think that's a good thing um what I would tell people is uh, this isn't a trend. This is a lifestyle, you know, and it is a way of life. And once you go in and get into it, I mean, there is no going back. So, I mean, it's refreshing to see more people interested and open um, to a different way of thinking, practicing, and definitely um, honoring your ancestors. So, yeah, even in um, 2021, the name and the legacy of Dr. Buzzer still lives on. I don't know how it will sit well now <laughs> with, you know, root workers and, and, and people of that matter in the, you know, in the court staring down at jurors, you know, this coercion, I guess. <laughs> but they, I mean, they're we're still around. They're still around. You know what I mean? Um and hopefully, as I dig more and more into, I, I plan to sit with some of the elders uh, on my mother's side and see if I can get any more um, information of that, of, um, you know, information on him out there. I'm probably going to have to tap into my, my uh, volunteers in, in Georgia to get more uh, information on it. But, yeah, he was like one of the first celebrity witch doctor voodoo medicine men, okay? He had people coming in from everywhere. And even, you know, through the mail, you know. Also, on a live panel, it was mentioned about um the headless man walking around South Carolina. Okay, obviously, you guys, I didn't, I've never seen this myself, but I did some digging and I asked my, um, my papa, my grandpa about it or whatever. And apparently, um, it was a sheriff, a sheriff who practiced um, roots as well. He was the witch doctor sheriff, so to speak. This was in uh, <clears throat> like 79, I think. 
And um I'm sorry, y'all. I thought I was hearing someone coming in. Okay. And um his body, his head was decapitated and um the rumors, you know, around was that, you know, you could still see, you know, the headless body wandering, you know, the streets of, you know, Beaufort County. And to this day, the case has never been solved. But I can see, I mean, I, I, I hadn't seen it, you know, <laughs> but I can see how that kind of stuck around too since, um, that's where the most famous Dr. Buzzard held from, you know, and, and his sons and sons. Um, then you had the the witch doctor sheriff who was down there in that case. Um, but yeah, that was never solved. And to this day, people still talk about the headless corpse that's wandering around, you know, in spirit, so to speak. I hope that's not true. Um, you know, if any root workers are down there or you know, conjurers of that nature, I, w I would think that the best thing to do is to put that kind of energy, you know, at rest permanently, you know, send them on to where they need to be instead of, you know, walking aimlessly around this dimension, right? It's kind of boring here. I'm going to finish this um, just off with, with a final thought. Um, I think ultimately... Um, what root doctors and root workers and conjurers and things of that nature do, um, it also plays, you know, on the psychological. It's all about hope. People will look anywhere for hope, which is why I've made several videos. And I'm sure some of these people that own bodegas, are, you know, in, in the city uh, want to kick my ass. <laughs> Because I used to drag the asses, you know, about um, charging people this exorbitant amount of money for shit that people could honestly do themselves. Um, for a long time, root workers and even um, card readers and shell readers, bone readers, it, they were traditionally, you know, called in our culture, um, like the poor man psychiatrist. I don't know. Um, how many times I would do readings for folks and um, it turned into a whole counseling session, okay? You might have called me about your, your ex or you're about to be ex and I didn't, we didn't just shifted the whole conversation to empowering uh, you, you know what I mean? Definitely, hold on. I... Okay, making sure it didn't cut off my, my mic. Ultimately, I feel like voodoo and um, conjuring and root medicine, it just utilizes um, the power of suggestion and it just amplifies it. You know what I mean? You know how people say um, words have power? They do. They call it spelling because they're spells. Um, I truly believe that we um, control our destinies. Either we can speak life over ourselves or we can speak death over ourselves which I, I can make a whole nother video about this another time, but it just blows my mind hearing these um, these rappers today speaking death over their lives. And then everyone is shocked when they get killed exactly the way they, they rapped about it. Crazy. But words are powerful. It's a frequency, a frequency that I believe that we all have power to tap into. Now, as far as the actual root working and herbs and things of that nature, if you're not trying to learn it, leave it to the professionals because you definitely don't want to um, kill somebody <laughs> at all or get somebody really sick because you want to play around um, with herbs and things of that nature. And I really feel like um, in order to be successful at it, it is psychological. You know what I mean? You, you begin to, to build a rapport with um, your clients. You know what I mean? And the confidence and the trust is there. But ultimately, I think that we all have the power to do those things um, for ourselves. You know what I mean? But for those who don't, you're, you're always going to find a Dr. Buzzard, okay? <laughs> 
male or female. They are still out here. They are still, you know, getting down into the roots. And when I say they, I mean we, I mean me as well. You know what I mean? Um, so I just wanted to give this little quick story time or whatever um, to talk about my late great uncle who, you know, in his time was like a celebrity voodoo medicine man. How about that, right? <laughs> voodoo medicine man. So I, I just think it's kind of cool. You know, I mean, out of nowhere too. I was, I don't even think they were talking about that. Now. I don't even know how my uncle came up, but I figured um, I'd just bring this quick uh, video to you guys about the legendary Dr. Buzzard, who will never be forgotten. Period. <laughs> he won't be forgotten because obviously we're talking all these years later and he still lives on. He really does. I will say, um, as it was then, as it is now, this will always be a way of life for some of us, even if we don't know that we're doing it. You know, you got those old sayings and things that you do. They come from somewhere. So, and what I mean by somewhere is it, it, it's in the blood. It's in your bloodline. It's in your gene pool. It's in the um, oral stories you were told, you know, verbally. A lot of this stuff isn't written down in books, um, which I think is a good thing and a bad thing. But hoodoo and voodoo and things of that nature has um, traditionally been in oral type relationship. I mean, religion that was passed on verbally. So, I mean, <clears throat> it's not going anywhere. You're always going to have folks like me and others who are going to teach it to theirs and then theirs and then theirs. One thing I can tell you about people of color in our uh, traditions and religions, um, they live on. Despite everything we go through, they live on. So I think it's pretty dope that I was uh, related. Well, I am related to someone, you know, who was like a celebrity back then, you know. That's dope. I do have um, two other people coming for this Black History Month who I was related to. I'll get into that sometime. Uh, within the next couple of weeks. Again, um, I've been super busy with the work and, and all of that other stuff, but I try to bring you guys some content, you know, here and there, uh, as far as with spirituality and, you know, weird news. weird fun facts and things of that nature um, that deals with um, the cult and uh, African religion, religions and spirituality, things of that nature. So I'm not going to hold y'all. It's a Friday mm -hmm. afternoon. Y'all be great. And just have a wonderful weekend. Of course, I'll be in these bushes. I'll be in your bushes. Mine and yours is too. <laughs> Y'all have a good one. Peace. like you. I don't like your energy. Stay away, demon. Hey, y'all. Okay, so I did, um, hopefully y'all can hear me. Can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me? Microphone check, one, two, one, two. I did this yesterday. I was supposed to, um, to do the live yesterday. Uh, did y'all hear me when I actually put this on mute for a second? Because I don't think I was, um, I don't think y'all was able to hear me. What I was saying was, Josiah, 
I can see people saying hi to you. I see people saying hi to you all the time in the bushes that I frequent. Um, but okay, it didn't go out. I actually was talking and I didn't I forgot to unmute my mic. Josiah. Why do you have me blocked? Hmm. <laughs> Cause I don't have you blocked. I don't think I have you blocked. Fix that. Mm -hmm. Do that. <laughs> that is the link. Um, I do got a couple minutes to spare. I don't know what the hell. Somebody was just back here. I couldn't see who it was. You can't hear me now. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Let me know. Yeah, they can hear Hudson. I think it's maybe you. Because uh, uh, D was talking about Josiah. That's what I was just talking about. That's chunk in the background, y'all. I'm not going to keep y'all long. Um, that was just a quick little um, tidbit into some of uh my history also poodle history you know and um our roots and i'm um, in the south you know what i mean um especially when it comes to traditions that we even keep now to this day and we don't know why but yeah it goes back all the way there my advice uh would be to definitely um sit with your elders in your family um, visit, go, go and see, you know, your family, your relatives reconnect. Definitely. Especially when COVID, um, COVID, uh, actually lifts up or whatever. Go travel, sit with your elders and your, your, your loved ones and learn. That's the only way, um, we are able to keep these traditions strong and let them live on. I hate when people always say like black people in America, we don't have a culture, we don't have a history and think, yeah, we do. We do actually, we have a, we have a lot of it and we should embrace it. So that's all I got for y'all today. And I hope that was just a little interesting tidbit um, about my late great uncle, great, great uncle. Um, and just a little bit up about myself, you know? He, yes, Hudson. He will be getting a chicken bone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. So there is no questions or comments. I'm good. You know, I just wanted to put this out here for Black History Month. I thought it was funny that I was really in the bushes too, like listening and, and putting chunks of sleep in. And then I heard, you know, Dr. Buzzer and it kind of poked my ear up. I was like, oh, who was talking about my great great? <laughs> So, you know, I popped in and, you know, made a couple comments, but I figured I'd just put this out there because it's not really much um, on YouTube that much. Uh, if you look at my thumbnail, I'll put it in the community section as well. No, I think it's in the community section. Um, that is a picture of his um, headstone. Um, like it was mentioned, I, I had to actually silence myself when I was uploading it when they said he died of um, cancer. So I silenced myself a bit. Um, it was a bit more detailed than that. Uh, Let's just say that <laughs> I, I still need to talk to my my uh, my grandfather. You know what's okay and what what's not okay to talk about publicly. But um, yeah, that's all I got, you guys. You have a beautiful, wonderful Saturday. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I'll see y'all in the bushes. All right. And on the panel, you know, I jump I jump on the panel here and there. <laughs> all right, y'all. Toodles. Chunk, you want to say bye? Nah, he not saying bye. He can smell the chicken. <laughs> Toodles, y'all. I'm out. Peace.